Hello, I'm Graham Steele, CEO and founder of CryptoSense, and today I'm going to talk about what do the French and the Germans think about post-quantum cryptography? So why are we even asking this question? Well, we know we need to standardize post-quantum cryptography to be ready for a time in the future where a large-scale quantum computer is available that can break the asymmetric cryptography we're using today. And the process for finding candidate algorithms that can resist quantum computers and classical computers uh, to take the, the place of the current algorithms is being run by NIST. So this is the US National uh, Standards Agency, which has run several cryptographic standardization processes in the past. But in the past, there have been a few uh, rather strange quirks, we could say. For example, NIST standardized a method for uh, pseudo-random number generation, which could be backdoored. It was recommended to them by the NSA as a way to get these backdoored random number generators into certain products. So NIST has done a lot of communication since then about how their methodologies have changed and they've really separated away from this way of thinking this isn't going to happen again. But naturally, this is a sort of natural national security level uh, consideration. So European bodies are, in a, some sense, looking at their own way of doing things for post-quantum crypto. So in particular, let's look at what the Germans and the French are thinking. So the German BSI, or Bundesamt für Sicherheit in der Informationstechnik, has been talking about post-quantum cryptography for some time. Their most recent publication is from June 2020. So they have a white paper available in German. Uh, and they have some other documents too. So the white paper describes that for the BSI, the construction of a large quantum computer that can break current asymmetric cryptography is inevitable. It's not a, an if, it's a, it's a when. And they base this on a study that they commissioned from some researchers at Saarland University who looked at the, the physics of this and looked at the progress and the investment that's going in there and, and, and gave their opinion on, on the way that this was going. And that was enough to convince the BSI that this was something they needed to act on right away. And so the BSI has actually already standardized in 2020 two post-quantum crypto algorithms, two of the candidates that are in the NIST competition. So they have standardized, that is, they've given uh, approval for and parameter choices for uh, classical Machilis, which is a code-based uh, algorithm, uh, and uh, Frodo, which is uh, based on unstructured lattices. And they recommend that for systems that have to be uh, keeping information secure, highly important information secure way into the future, they should already be looking at doing a hybrid key exchange. So doing some key exchange with a classical mechanism and with one of these post-quantum uh, mechanisms. Uh, they should be looking at that uh, around now. So this is a little bit controversial in the sense that while Classical Macalis is a finalist in the NIST competition, uh, Frodo is uh, no longer a finalist. It's been moved to the alternate category. Uh, and the BSI uh, make a comment on this and point out that uh, they intend to, to do their own thing. So they're not guaranteeing that the, uh, in the end, the BSI's list of approved algorithms will actually be the same as NIST one. The reason the BSI chose these two algorithms is because it's a very conservative choice. So in terms of security, we're pretty confident about uh, code-based cryptography. So this is all based around ideas which have been around for a very long time, since the late 70s. Uh, and we're pretty confident about the Frodo scheme. It's quite a conservative scheme uh, and it has performance uh, a penalty to it. And it has very large uh, public and private keys compared to some other lattice-based uh, schemes. But we do have pretty good confidence that the, the thing will end up being secure. So you can see why the BSI might go to standardize those ones first rather than, the, than one of the others. So what do the French think about this? So we, uh, until recently, we didn't really know because there isn't a similar publication or there wasn't a similar publication by the Agence Nationale de la Sécurité des Systèmes d'Informatique, but they now do have that. So they have a, uh, gave a, a talk at a post-quantum crypto conference uh, last week. Uh, a woman called Melissa Rossi gave a talk explaining what the NC position is on this. And for once, the French and the Germans more or less agree. So uh, the NC position is uh, indeed that they would like uh, people, if your information needs to be protected past 2030, uh, to start looking at using hybrid schemes uh, to generate the keys or exchange the, key, the keys, establish the keys to, to do that encryption from now. Uh, and that they uh, uh, would like uh, Frodo to be considered uh, as a finalist because it is a conservative choice uh, in the lattice-based um, space, even though it has these uh, uh, performance uh, issues. Uh, and they say they're going to release their own white paper uh, about this uh, sometime before uh, the end of the year. 
so that's the ANSI position. So whether this uh, Franco-German uh, lobbying towards uh, NIST to, to push Frodo back up into the finalist category uh, has any effect uh, remains to be seen. Uh, but if you want to keep up to date with the post-quantum crypto standardization process and all the news, do subscribe here to the CryptoSense channel. We cover all kinds of interesting applied crypto topics here. And I'll see you again soon here for another video. Mm -hmm.